Hey, I'm Carly Ray, and this is Book Hour with Renee Rosen. Hi, I'm Renee Rosen, the author of six historical novels, including Park Avenue Summer, and this, my most recent novel, The Social Graces. I'm here with Hey, It's Carly Ray. Welcome, Renee, to Hey, It's Carly Ray Book Hour. I'm so excited to have you on, and I cannot wait to hear more of your story and more about The Social Graces out now. So I probably shouldn't admit this, but I was not a big reader growing up. Um, ironically, I always knew I wanted to be a writer from the time I was a little girl, but I did not discover books until later on. But I was always telling stories. Um, I was either writing plays or writing poems or writing little stories. And, you know, I was a nightmare to play Barbies with. Just ask my friends from my childhood. You know, we would all get together and everybody was so concerned about the dresses and wanted to just try on different outfits. And I wanted the storyline. That's what I was concerned about, the plot. You know, how, how are Barbie and Ken gonna go to Paris? They just had a fight. So they need to resolve that before they can move on. So I was very concerned with story. And, um, you know, I remember, you know, of course I, I read books in school and all of that, but I didn't start reading on my own until I saw a copy of Rage of Angels by Sidney Sheldon that my mother was reading. And I picked it up and I read it and I thought, I could do this, which is so arrogant. And, you know, I learned that it really wasn't that easy. And, um, but after that, I just started reading. I was reading historical fiction, literary fiction, poetry, short stories, and I just never looked back. So uh, it was probably in my late 20s that I discovered historical fiction, and I've been a fan ever since. So this is my very first novel, Every Crooked Pot. It came out in 2007. It took me 17 years to write this book, and it's a semi-autobiographical story. It's the most personal book I've ever written. And um, I guess if I could go back and tell my young writer self anything, it would be to relax and enjoy it. You get one debut and it goes by so quickly. And I was absolutely terrified when this book came out. It was such a personal story. You know, I had never done any sort of public speaking. I'd never been interviewed before um, and it paralyzed me. And I was just, I robbed myself of my own debut because I was so uh, just afraid of putting it all out there. I'm actually a very private person and I told a very personal story. Um, and I guess, you know, not only did I move away from personal fiction to historical fiction, but I've also had the benefit of really good editing. So I approach my work differently now because of that and I think I'm a sharper writer for it. So this is my new novel, The Social Graces, and it's based on the true story of two very powerful women, Alva Vanderbilt and Caroline Astor, battling for control of New York society during the Gilded Age. So we're talking the 1870s to the early 1900s, and it's a time where women had very few rights. They didn't uh, work outside the home, they couldn't vote, uh, they didn't have their own money. They had to answer to their husbands or their fathers. But the one thing that they had, and the reason they got up in the morning, was society. And society became their focus point. And it was the more celebrated the hostess, the more powerful the woman. And no one was more powerful than Caroline Astor. She was the reigning queen of society. She was a gatekeeper. She decided who was in and who was left out in the cold. And Alva Vanderbilt is her rival. And not only does Alva want in society, she wants to take over society. And this sets up a competition with the two of them trying to outdo each other at every turn. Who can build the biggest mansion? Who can throw the most lavish ball? Who can spend more money on their clothes, et cetera, et cetera. And a friend of mine, a bookseller said, oh my God, they're like the original Real Housewives of New York City, but in ball gowns. So it's a fun romp through the Gilded Age. So writing historical fiction is always a little tricky and I found that each book sort of dictates its own uh, process. And really the jumping off point for me is finding either a 
time period or event or a really fascinating person. And from there, I'll try and read everything I can, you know, any kind of biographies, uh, any kind of nonfiction that I can find on those subjects. And I'll watch films and documentaries. Um, if I can, I'll go and interview people. And then if it's possible, I like to go and physically see where I'm writing about, whether it's, you know, uh, the mansions in Newport, uh, Rhode Island for the social graces. Um, it's, I think it's important to really see it, touch it, feel it. Um, and I don't outline. My life would be so much easier if I did outline. Um, I tend to write myself into 20,000 word corners, um, but I never know what's gonna happen from one scene to the next. I let the characters dictate that and I follow their lead. And, um, you know, for me, I wait and see how the story is gonna unfold on its own. And that's my process. So storyline for me always comes out of the research. You know, um, for example, when I was writing What the Lady Wants, I was researching Marshall Field in Chicago during the Gilded Age. And when I stumbled upon the fact that he had a 30 year love affair with his neighbor, boom, that was a story that I could tell. Um, in the case of Windy City Blues, when I was doing my research and I found that there was a record label started by two Polish Jewish immigrants with no musical abilities whatsoever who started the whole Chicago blues scene and gave birth to rock and roll. Boom, that's the story I could tell. Um, in the case of uh, Park Avenue Summer, when I found out that Helen Gurley Brown had become the first female editor-in-chief of Cosmopolitan Magazine with absolutely no editorial experience, no magazine experience, I just said, this is a story I can tell. So I go into my research, I look for that nugget. In the case of the Social Graces, it was Alva and Caroline's rivalry to take over society. And I, that's what opens that very first bit of the story for me. And that's where uh, I'd like to follow that lead. So picking a favorite one of my novels would be really tough. That would be like picking a favorite child. I do love all my books, but I have to say, usually it's a book that I'm working on in the moment that has a special place in my heart. So right now it's gotta be The Social Graces, um, only because I've been so consumed with this book for the past two and a half years, and I'm so excited for people to uh, discover what I found in my research. Um, I could not have dreamed up these characters. Fact is definitely stranger in fiction, and I'm really excited for readers to meet Ward McAllister, who was the tastemaker of the day. He was Caroline's sidekick, and he was the ultimate snob. He would scold a hostess for not frappeing her wine sufficiently. Or Mamie Fish, who she was the hostess with the mostess, and uh, she threw a ball for a chimpanzee. And people threw balls for their dogs and horses and an elephant even. So um, there's a lot of fun to be had in these pages and I had a ball working on it and I really hope readers will have as much fun reading. So social media has become very important in the publishing world. You know, if you think about it, it's really a two-way street. It enables me as an author to reach more readers and also it enables readers to reach the authors. And it's opened up wonderful communication and feedback, and I love hearing from readers. And, you know, I don't know how we would get our books out there now without influencers like you, Carly Rae, all the bloggers. Um, you guys have really changed the landscape of uh, the publishing world, and social media is just a really important part of that. So I, you know, I didn't have that when I first started. So being able to access that has been a tremendous benefit in my career. What do I want readers to take away from my novels? Um, the first thing is I want them to be entertained. Second would be to be transported to another place and time that they may not be familiar with. And I think uh, the third thing would be an appreciation for our history, particularly women's history, and how far we've come 
and the kind of courage and struggles that those women went up against to bring us to where we are today. Um, that's what I want people to take away from my books. Thanks for watching my book hour on Hey, It's Carly Rae. I hope you'll check out my book, The Social Graces, and my other novels, and I hope to see you on social media. You'll find all my links on the description below. Thanks. So that concludes today's book hour with Renee. Renee, thank you so much for joining me on Hey, It's Carly Rae Book Hour. I loved hearing your story and I know my viewers did as well. If you guys love this video, give this video a thumbs up. And if you guys want to get your copy of The Social Graces, you guys can check in the links below because I have the link there and you can have my copy. So be sure to check that out. Let me know your thoughts on today's video by commenting below. You guys can find out more from me and Renee on heyitscarlyray.com or you guys can check us out on social media. All the links are in the description below. And I hope you guys have an awesome day and stay tuned because I have more authors coming your way.